Hi, welcome to Yoga with Janet. I'm Janet and I am going to take you through a 60-minute crow flow. So Bakasana, crow pose, is an arm balance. Um, so we're going to be cultivating a lot of upper body strength, um, stability in the shoulders, um, bent arm strength, and also this action of pressing away to lift up. Okay, so come on to your back. And lay all the way down. And just come into a little shavasana. And you begin just with the hands on the body somewhere. And I've been loving this idea of just acknowledging that you're now in a space of doing yoga. So with everything we do, it's going a little bit slower, being a little bit more mindful and simply just taking care a little bit more. And with the intention that that translates to off the mat, being a little bit more thoughtful with everything we do, speak, interact with. Take a big breath in. And out. Oh. Draw your right knee into your right armpit. And so the knee comes in. And then your left leg, you can keep it um, bent or you can straighten it if that feels um, all right, if it's not too much. And then we're going to begin in half happy baby. So take your hand either behind the thigh to the outer ankle or to the outer edge of the foot. I'm going to flex the foot and then start to pull the knee towards the armpit. Feel the whole length of the spine on the mat, tailbone, skull, and just gently breathing into the inner groins, the hip. As you pull the foot down, I want you to also press the foot back up into the hand and you feel that outer hip switch on and engage. And anchor the left thigh bone. Take one more breath. And out. Good heel towards the bum and then release. Just feel the blood flow back in. Other side. And draw your left knee towards your left armpit. Take a couple moments to transition. And you can grab from behind the thigh and the outer ankle or the outer edge of the foot. But if your shoulder leaves the ground, um, I want you to just grab the ankle and pull the knee down towards your armpit, and feel the connection of the thigh bone to your rib cage. We're gonna revisit this. So it's this idea of connecting our lower body to our upper body, which we do in our arm balances. Take one more breath. And release. I'm gonna bring your arms above your head, reach up, and then you're gonna bend your elbows so your forearms are now parallel with the mat. Elbows directly above the shoulders. So we have our little crow arms by just flexing the fingers back towards the face. Firm the upper outer arms in, sort of like you're in chaturanga. Point your feet, bring your legs together. Tap your right knee to your right elbow without moving the arms. 
and release. Tap left knee to left elbow and release. A little edge of my face. Good. Right knee, right elbow. Squeeze and release. Good. Left knee, left elbow. Squeeze and release. Now you're going to pull the belly in. Press your low back down and lift the feet to hover. You can always bend the knees to make this a little bit easier. We're going to bend the right knee, tap your right elbow, and then we coordinate, switch, left knee, left elbow, sort of like bicycles, but same knee to elbow, and switch, switch. We're here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, Bring both knees in, squeeze the heels towards your bum. So you're in a little dead crow on your back. Squeeze the heels to the bum, elbows to the knees, and we're gonna lift the bum 10 times just by pushing the belly down. Nine, keep the heels squeezing in. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, Ooh. release. Reach your arms above your head and just feel the whole body stretch. Then grab from behind the thighs and just rock and roll along the spine until you come to downward facing dog. Cross the ankles, press the palms, downward facing dog. Anchor the inner palms, spread your fingers, and really grip into your fingertips. This is really important in our arm balances and anything where we're using our hands. But firm the upper outer arms in and then lift long through the tailbone. Rise onto your toes and then tiptoe to the top of the mat. Step between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. And exhale, fold. Slowly roll up so you can feel the sensation in the back. One vertebrae at a time. And arrive. Bring your hands into your heart, feet together to touch. Inhale, interlace the hands. Exhale, press your palms forward, round the back. Feel the flexion. You gotta reach up, lift, long, lift, lift, lift. And then release your hand. Come all the way forward, belly to thighs. Wrap your hands behind your calves. And, and then start to pull yourself in so you kind of feel the spreading across the back. It's like the elbows are coming behind you. And release the hands. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. And as you exhale, step your right foot back. Lower the back knee, point the toes, and sweep your arms all the way up. Low lunge. Find the length and then take the arms into a cactus. As you breathe in, Open and expand the chest. And as you breathe out, you'll round. And draw the elbows, forearms, palms to touch, squeeze. Again, inhale, expand, open the chest. And exhale, round. So it's like you're doing your cat cows, but we're in our lunge. That sensation of spreading across the back. One more, inhale. Expand, open the chest, open, 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 and then round, spread the shoulder blades. Good. And just a little bit of a curl in. Release your hands, half split, straighten your left leg. You can always use blocks or just come to the fingertips. Flex the toes back toward your face, and at the same time, I want you to dig the heel down, and that'll switch the hamstring on. 
Find the length in the spine. It's like your sternum is reaching forward. Shoulder blades draw down the back. And bend into your left knee, plant the hands, and then step to a knee plank. So you'll place the hands flat, and then for your knee plank, you are gonna drop the pelvis, but draw the tailbone under to avoid sinking in the belly. We're gonna do scapula push-ups. This works with creating um, stable shoulders. So the arms stay straight. You just squeeze the shoulder blades together behind the back and then dome and press away. Good. Squeeze shoulder blades together and then dome and press away. One more, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Like there's a pencil between your shoulder blades. Good. And then press away. Keep the pushing action happening the whole time. We're gonna lower, bend the elbows all the way to the belly. Point the toes. Inhale, cobra, peel the chest away. And exhale, fold. Again, inhale, cobra, anchor the pinky toes. And release, one more. Inhale, lift, maybe lift the hands. And release, press to your knees. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Lift the hips and find more spank, space, spanks, space in your lower back and your upper back by just pressing away and lifting through the pelvis. And center your left foot, lift your right leg, take a breath in, and then draw your knee to your chest. So think thigh to the rib cage, like we were on our back, step through. Lower the back knee, bring the arms up, low lunge, other side. So a little bit of a sense of a flow. Open up the arms to your cactus. As you inhale, expand the chest. And as you exhale, round and gather everything in. Inhale, open, open, open. And as you exhale, it's like the outer edges of a canoe. They're wrapping inwards to contain everything inside. One more. Lift, expand, and then Draw everything in. Press the forearms, palms, fingertips. Feel that connection. Release your hands. Half split straight in your right leg. Flex the toes towards your face. Pinky toe. Press through the big toe mound. And, and find a little bit of ease as well. Tension is healthy to hold the body into place. We like tension but only what's necessary, letting go of the rest. And bend your right knee, tuck the back toes, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway left, and exhale, fold. Slowly roll up, one vertebrae at a time. Drink. Draw your hands into your heart. Inhale, interlace the hands. Exhale, press the palms forward. Spread the shoulder blades. Reach up, lift, lift, lift. And then fold all the way in. But take the hands behind the calves. Try to bring your elbows closer together. And then lift through the tailbone. This is where you're cultivating the connection, upper body to lower body. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, step the left foot back. Lower the left knee, draw the hands into your heart. Big breath in. And as you exhale, twist to the right, just hover the left elbow. I hate when my teachers make me do this. just hover, but you know, it's good for you. 
roll the right chest back. And then hook, left elbow to the right thigh. Okay, take the thumbs out of the armpits, expand the chest, breathe. And if you're stable, you can tuck the back toes and then press the thigh to the ceiling. Descend the right hip, front hip and knee in the same line, and then gently find that spiraling open as you firm the right hip in. Release the hands down and step to plank. Okay, so we're gonna do the scapula push-ups again. Option to lower the knees, or you can keep them lifted this time for a little bit more challenge. Again, draw the tailbone under, little tuck of the chin, and we lower, squeeze the shoulder blades, and then protract, press away. And retract, and press. Last one. Squeeze the shoulder blades, press and spread across the back. Keep the pressing action. We lower chaturanga, you can always go to the belly. Push the feet back, cobra, or upward facing dog. A little bit of a linger, and then downward facing dog. Inhale, and exhale. Center the right foot, lift your left leg, three-legged dog. And draw your thigh to your rib cage, spread across the back, step through. Lower the back knee, bring the hands into the heart. Wiggle around, get settled. And then lean forward and twist to the left. Right tricep to the left thigh. Ooh, I forgot to do the hover. Gotta hover, right knee on top of the left elbow. Draw the left shoulder back. See, our inkling is always to take the easy path. So sometimes we just need someone else to work us a little bit harder. Now right elbow to the thigh. Lift the chest. Spin the left chest open. Okay, tuck the back toes. You can come into the high lunge with the revolved twist. Squeeze the left hip into the right inner thigh and press the right thigh bone to the ceiling to stabilize the legs and the pelvis. Release the hands down and then step to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift and exhale, fold. Slowly roll up. Last roll up all the way to stand. Okay, take the hands by your side, palms face forward, rise onto the toes, squeeze your ankles together, and, and then start to stick your booty out, chest out, all the bits sticking out, legs stay straight. It's called diver's pose, like you're peering over a cliff in super sexy fashion. Release the hands down to the mat. Keep the heels lifted high. You might wiggle the feet back a little bit. This is our first little crow. You can use this as a preparatory as well. Um, can lift the heels, separate the knees into a diamond, and then bend the elbows backwards. Start to nestle the knees up towards the armpits. Lean forward, lean forward. Grip the fingertips and peer over that cliff. Maybe the toes lift and you squeeze the heels to your bum to use your hamstrings like we did on our back. Squeeze, squeeze. If you come out of it, you can always come back in. No stress, no problem. Just pick yourself back up. And then you can either step or jump, chaturanga. Upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Little nip slip. Okay. Lift up through the hips. Pull the ribs in. Center your left foot. Lift your right leg to the ceiling. Inhale. A knee to your chest, thigh to your rib cage. A little bit more of strength work. Tap the shin down 
and lift the thigh bone to touch your ribs. Tap the shin, lift it up, seal that off. Last one, tap, lift and dull, and then step between the hands. You can always gather the ankle, come forward, place the back heel down. Rise up, warrior one. So the back foot is at that 45 degree angle. Anchor the front big toe. So in our warriors, the work in the front foot is to roll from the heel into the big toe and the opposite of the back foot because the weight tends to go into the big toe. You have to press into the blade edge of the back foot. Little foot lesson for you. Deep breath in and out. Bring the elbows in towards the waist and flex the fingers back. And so the forearms are parallel to the mat, not up or down, like they're pressing away, like you're in your crow or chaturanga. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, I want you to actively press away, like you're pressing a brick wall. Good, come back, elbows in. This is where we work that pressing away. Press, press, press. And then come back. And one more. Press away. And then we'll open warrior two. Bend into your right knee deeply. Right knee on top of the right heel. Spread the arms, spread the chest. Firm the right hip in and under and Guide the right knee in the direction of your second and third toe. Avoid letting that knee turn in. Take the gaze forward. Flip your right palm reverse. Reach up and back, up and back. Side body stretch. And then straighten your right leg. It should feel nice. We move to triangle. Right hand inside of your right knee, the shin or to a block. Lift the left chest, left arm. Plug into your big toes, lift through the kneecaps. Good, and then press your tailbone into your pubic bone to lengthen your lower back. Lower belly pulls in. And bend the right knee, reverse. Reach up and back. And keep a deep bend in your right knee, side angle. Just right forearm to right thigh. Lift out of the bottom shoulder and sweep your left arm forward. Palm face down. Wrap the tricep down. And the work is to deepen into the right hip. Take your left hand back, down, Around, place the left hand inside the right foot. Reach your right arm to the ceiling. Look up, side plank. Spin the toes to the right, step the right foot back. Okay, so we're in side plank. We're gonna do the push-ups again, the little scapula push-ups, okay? You sink into the left shoulder and then lift out of it. Try not to dip the hips. Sink into the shoulder, lift out. Again, sink into the shoulders, lift out, good, and then release, right hand down. Move through our flow, lean forward, lower, chaturanga, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Big breath in. And full breath out. Good. Okay, move to the other side. Lift the left leg, inhale. And then draw the thigh in towards the ribs. Forward, forward, forward. And tap the shin. And then lift up. Two more, tap the shin. Lift and press, tap the shin, 
and lift. Step between the hands. And place the back heel down. Warrior one, reach up. Take a few moments to settle into the legs. Roll the right hip forward, firm the left hip in. And then bring the elbows into the waist. Oh, flex the fingers back. Deep breath in. As you exhale, press, press, press. And then inhale, draw them in. You to exhale, press away. And inhale, bring it back in. Again, press, last one. Warrior two. Open the arms and then settle into the front thigh. Squeeze the left hip in. And open the right chest. Look forward and find a little bit of ease within the challenge. Flip your left palm, reverse, lift up and back, reverse, and then straighten your left leg. And reach the left arm forward, and then take the hand inside of the shin, and reach your right arm to the ceiling, triangle, trikonasana. Draw your under shoulder behind you, the shoulder blade draws down the back. Roll the left lung under, right chest open. Big breath in. And then bend your left knee, reverse, reach up and back. Find the ease in this little repetition. Good, left forearm, left thigh. And, and then sweep your right arm overhead. Good, draw the left shoulder back. Roll the chest open and breathe for three, for two, and one. Take your right hand back and down inside the foot. Reach your left arm to the ceiling. A little crack in my back and then side plank. Take the left foot on top of the right. Firm the butt in, expand the chest. We'll do those little push-ups. Draw the right shoulder blade down and then press away. Two more. Down and press. One more. Press. Left hand down. Move through your flow. Lower. Chaturanga. Elbows firm in. Press the feet back, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Inhale, and exhale. At home, bring your feet together to touch. And we're gonna do those leprechaun hops again. Um, I love these guys, they're the most accessible little tuck jump. So you shorten your down dog, hands are heavy, Arms stay straight, rise onto your toes, look forward. You click the heels above your head, bend the knees, click the heels. A few more. You can always hold it if you catch it. Three, two, step or jump, top of the mat. Oof. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. So those are like your little crow legs as you're jumping. And then sweep the arms all the way up, press the palms above the head, and circle the hands back to the heart. Okay, chair pose, bend the knees, getting warm. Reach the arms up. Bring the hands to the heart. Sit a little bit lower and then twist. Left elbow to the right thigh. Squeeze the hips to the midline and then take the thumb out of the armpit. Head and tail in the same line. 
Inhale, back to center. And then exhale, twist over to the left, right elbow to the left thigh, squeeze the knees together, open the chest. Inhale, back to center, and then stand all the way up. Okay, second little crow will enter it the same way. Rise onto the toes. Start to stick your butt out, chest out. And so you press the thigh bones back, chest counters forward, and then release the hands. What this does is it keeps your butt high. I see a lot of people who like to drop their butt and lean forward. You have to get it higher um, to feel a sense of flight. So lift the bum up, separate the knees, look forward, and then bend the elbows. Knees into the armpits and play with the feet lifting and then squeeze the heels towards your bum. Lift the belly, lift the ribs off of the thighs and then step or jump back. Move through your flow. We meet downward facing dog. Inhale. And exhale. Center your left foot. Lift your right leg to the ceiling. And then draw your thigh in. Round the back. Place the back heel down. Rise up, warrior one. Good. And exhale, warrior two. Flip the front palm, reverse, reach up and back. Good. And then take the right hand inside of your right knee for triangle. Left arm to the ceiling, look up. Find the stability in the feet. Firm the right hip. In and then take the left hand behind the back for a half bind. You can grab onto your waistband if you have a strap. You can use a strap or your t-shirt, towel, or the right hip crease. And then spin the chest up and back. Bend the right knee and reverse. Keep the half bind. Reach up and back. Good, now half bound side angle. Right forearm, right thigh. Lift out of the bottom shoulder, and this is a beautiful place to stay. You can stay here, or you can work to descend your right hand. As you descend the right hand, the hip goes with it, so the hip doesn't go back. Again, you can stay, or you can use your shirt. You can grab onto your fingers or your strap. Lean the upper body back, and breathe. I'm going to give you an option. You can stay here or you can begin to straighten your right leg for bound triangle. Firm the right hip and lean the upper chest back. So the head and the tail on the same line rather than collapsing inwards. And then bend your right knee. Good. Just release your right hand. Stay in the half bind. If that's available, look down. I'm going to move into half moon. Place the right hand forward. Lift your left leg. So the hand is right underneath the shoulder. Flex your left foot. Toes angle somewhat down. Open the left chest and then you can free your arm and just feel the blood flow back in. One more breath. Left hand down, left hip down, left leg down, forward fold. Okay. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Okay, so if you're playing with crow, you can still continue with crow. I'm gonna play with side crow. So you bend your knees and sit onto your heels so you're in a little toe squat. And this is a really nice place to continue. I'm just gonna back it up a little bit so you guys can see me. And hands to the heart. And then you can stay here, squeeze the legs together, and you can take a twist, left elbow to the right thigh. Another good place to, to stay because you've added a little complexity now to this balance. You've added a twist. 
Right, so um, the easiest version of side crow is to take your hands to the side and make a little shelf with your arms, nestle the elbows into the thigh and the knee. Lean forward, look forward and play with lifting the toes. Or a more advanced option is to take the hands forward so your right elbow is free. Look forward, lift the toes. Wherever you are, hold for three. Press away, squeeze heels to bum, two, and release. Good. Deep breath and we come back into the twist, coming out the same way we came in, heart. And then release the hands, lift the hips and just shake it out. Do a little figure eight with the knees, the joints. Good. And then inhale. Lengthen, halfway, lift, plant the hands. You can step or jump and travel through a float. We're gonna meet in downward facing dog, so no stress wherever you are. And deep breath in and out. Center your right foot, lift your left leg to the ceiling, inhale. And then draw your knee into your chest. Step between the hands. Back heel down. Warrior one. Rise up. Feel a little sense of flow. And exhale open. Warrior two. Flip the front palm. Re-reverse. Reach up and back. Side body stretch. Straighten the left leg. Triangle, take the hand inside of the knee, the shin, spin the chest, right arm to the ceiling. Both legs straight, lift the kneecap, spin the chest, and then half bind. Take the right hand behind the back, find your left hip pocket, and the waistband, however you find, and then take the right shoulder back. Good. Press the tailbone forward. Reverse. Bend the left knee. Reach up and back. Continue to descend the left thigh and coming into side angle. Technical difficulties. Good. So you'll bring the forearm to the thigh. There we go. And you'll stay in the half bind or you can take the full bind. You can slide the hand down towards the foot, firm the left hip in, and notice if you collapse the chest, lean the upper body back, left hand underneath. Grab the fingertips or the strap, Good. and as you firm your left hip in, your body will automatically lean back and elongate. And you can straighten the left leg, Good. and keep head in line with the tail. Soften the front ribs in. Good. Bend your left knee. Good. Just release the left hand. Look forward. That cheeky half moon, our only little standing balance here. Left hand comes forward. Lift your right leg. Good. Instead of a back bend, I want you to bring that right foot slightly forward so it's in line with the hip and the head. You should even be able to see your foot down the length of the body and then free your right arm. Right hand down, right hip down, right foot down. Being slow, thoughtful, and taking care, fold in. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale. Bend your knees if you want to take a normal crow straight on Bakasana or Parsva Bakasana is side crow. We come into the toe squat. And I'm going to do it from the side so you can see. Hands to the heart. Squeeze the knees, lift the pelvic floor, and then twist right elbow to the left thigh. Lift up and away. Lift the belly off of the thighs. 
stay here, or the first variation is elbows into the side of the waist and the hip, and lean to the side, lift the toes. So you can stay there, or if you wanna free the left elbow, your fingers are in the same direction as your knees, out to the side. Notice they're quite wide. And then I lean on the diagonal, lean forward, forward, toes lift, squeeze heels to bump for three, two, and one. Release. Bring the hands into the heart, back into the twist, and then back to the center. Release, lift the hips. Do those little figure eights with the knees. Inhale, lengthen. Plant the hands, step or jump. Move through your last little flow. Upward facing and downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale. I'm gonna step through onto your bum and then come down onto your back. Take the feet wide, knock your knees in and kind of regather the hands onto the belly. This idea of pulling everything back to center. Taking a few breaths just to become quiet again. Right? Arm balances might feel quite loud to you. Uh, it's just a little playtime. And the idea is trying to stay quiet and smooth through the whole thing or working towards that, right? Through the challenge, through the change, staying centered. We're always surrounded by change and chaos, impermanence, and we work to find an anchor within ourselves. I'm gonna move into some back bends to reverse, or I should say balance out the work that we just did. Okay, so place the feet. We're gonna do bridge and wheel. But place the feet in line with the sit bones. I like to be able to touch my heels. You might have them a little bit further away. Draw the shoulder blades down, open the chest. But anchor the inner feet so they don't turn out and slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. And lift, lift, lift. Press the tailbone up into the pelvis. Press the chest towards the chin. Take one more breath here. And then slowly allow everything to come down one vertebrae at a time. No rush. Inhale. And exhale. Another round, adding on wheel. Place the feet and then slowly anchor the inner thighs. Good, because we've done all this work where we've been spreading them. And our work is to now draw the inner thighs more in towards each other. And slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Lift the pelvis. And you can stay in bridge or flip your hands. Come onto the crown of the head. Squeeze the elbows in. So we've done all this work of hugging in for krill, which is valuable for our wheel. And then you press into the feet, press into the hands, and squeeze the elbows in. Lift the pelvis. And breathe steady, right? Centered amongst 
the challenge centered amongst the changing world around us. Centered in the chaos, like the eye of a storm. And then come down. All the way. Hands onto the body. We'll do that again. I just like to take my time between just to like be still and to feel the effects of the back bending because they're quite intense. It can be very physiologically intense, um, but also emotionally as well. Lots of chatter and talking to yourself. And so align the heels. We'll do one more. Bridge or wheel, pick your pleasure, roll up. Shoulders underneath you. And then flip your hands, come to the crown of the head. Good. Press your feet down, inner feet heavy, firm the elbows and squeeze the forearms to your shins and press. can walk the feet in if you like any amount. Squeeze the arms towards each other. Let the inner thighs roll down. And breathe. And then release. Come all the way down. And just be still. Be in your experience. The heartbeat, right? the blood pumping. Maybe a bit sweaty. And I find that there's this moment of a bit of quietness after you come out of something quite full on. Um, hug your knees into your chest. And then slowly come all the way up to seat it. So we're going to come into a little Gomukhasana which I really like, um, especially trying to internally rotate the thighs when we've just done all of this external rotation. So you're gonna bring your right knee to stack on top of your left knee, and then you'll bring your left ankle underneath. If that's too much, you just keep that, like how it is. You can scoot the feet in. I try to have them in the same line. And then, um, we have done some binds, so you're welcome to take the full variation of the pose. You can just fold forward here, or you can reach your right arm above your head and take half Gomukhasana. You can grab onto your shirt, which I'm doing, and then the left hand underneath, internally rotating. You clasp the fingers. And then you stay here, or you can begin to hinge forward and just find a moment of stillness. Notice if the head is collapsing, press the skull into your forearm. And then slowly lift up and just release your hands. I'm going to come straight into a twist. So keep the bottom leg as it is, and you're just going to place the right sole of the foot onto the mat instead so that the knee comes up. 
and then the right hand behind you. And again, the bottom leg can be straight. Reach your left arm to the ceiling and begin to twist over to the right. Hook the elbow to the thigh and lift your lower back and breathe length into the spine. You can take the bind, wrapping the hand through the front of the thigh. Open the right chest. And then release, unravel over to the left. And then just bring both legs out in front of you. Shake them out. Move to the other side. So you'll cross your left thigh now on top. And the knees are stacked. And then option to bend that bottom leg under. The soles of the feet face up towards the ceiling. You can stay here and lean both sit bones anchored down or reach your left arm up to the ceiling. And press the skull into the forearm and then take your right hand, spin the thumb down and work the hand up the back. You can grab onto your fingers or your shirt and just take the half version, pull the ribs into the back body and hinge. Creating this little sense of ritual, right? A closing ritual. You can feel the practice slow down. Maybe a shift in mood. Sense of relief. I find that at the end of the practice, it's so good to give yourself time to um, cool down, to become a little bit removed from what you just did, less attached, but also um, in a way that you are creating this sort of positive memory around your practice to inspire you to get on your mat again, letting go of any Maybe frustration, sometimes that comes up in arm balancing or strength work. It's a bit roar. But maybe not for you. And then slowly come up. Just release the arms. Take a moment. Ooh. Feel it flow back in. And then place the left foot outside of your right thigh. Anchor your left sit bone. And the knee hugs and left hand behind you. Lift the lower back and reach your right arm up to the ceiling. Begin to twist to the left, right elbow to the left thigh. And lift, 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 and twist. You can take the bind, right hand underneath the thigh. Grab the fingers, open the chest. and then unravel over to the right. One last posture before Shavasana, Paschimottanasana. Seated forward bend, hands by your hips. You can always pop yourself up, to on a, up onto a blanket or a block if you're feeling like you're rolling into your lower back a lot. We wanna keep that lifted, supported, support the lower spine. And hands to the hips, or hands to the mat. Grow tall. You can tell I'm going delirious towards the end. And fold. Good. You can grab the outer edges of the feet or relax, release your hands by your side. If you're really doming, come higher so that you can pull the chest forward and stay anchored in the hips. Anchor the thigh bones down. 
And you can always do a little bind or clasp if you have that available. Reach the chest forward. Relax the neck. And breathe. Release the hands, lift up, and then arms forward. And you're slowly rolling down one vertebrae at a time. All the way onto your back. And if you'd like to end class how we started, you can just bring the hands onto the chest, the belly. And there's this sense of grounding, which is really nice after doing something more flighty and floating is just this sense of coming home. Allow the toes to flop open and now release the breath. Release your breathing so that you can completely let go and just experience the benefits of your practice. Stay here for as long as you can. You can reach your arms above your head if you're ready to move on. And then just hug your knees into your chest. Little hug. And roll off to the side. You're in a little pillow with your arm. And then when you're ready, keep the eyes closed and come up to seated. And bring your hands into your heart. And take a deep breath in. And out. If you'd like, you're welcome to join me for an OM just to seal your practice on the mat. And find this sense of connection. Empty the lungs. And inhale for OM. Bring the hands to the forehead and just take a deep bow. Namaste. And I hope you enjoyed your practice and found a sense of grounding and rooting down, but also the sense of lightness and a little bit of flight. Have a great day.